Hi, welcome to Source. I'm Van Homan. We're here at the Source Park in the Street Plaza with Hastings resident pro, Dan Lacey. He's no stranger to the streets. He's no stranger to the bowls. He can do it all. And today we're gonna to take a look at his signature frame and federal build. All right, Dan, your personal ride has a 20.75 top tube and your signature frame in general has a 13.75 rear end. 7.5 slammed. Okay, so that's a little bit longer than some of the frames by today's standards. So what do you like about that longer back end? And also just what's the most important to you when designing a frame in general? Um, well, for me, like obviously it's, it's a signature frame. Like mm -hmm. it's your personal preference. I'm not, I didn't go, I didn't obviously set out to make a frame that I wanted to appeal to a certain market. I wanted a frame that I wanted to ride. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds selfish and whatever, but you're making a frame, it needs to be how you want to ride your bike. So. Um, yeah, the back end probably is like the one thing that stands out from most, um, especially, especially nowadays. Like you said, there's a lot of people that run in way shorter back ends. Um, and I feel like that's, that's like very like street apt, like it's perfect for, especially like, you see a lot of the guys like spinning like crazy, like it's mad easy, like it's a lot easier to maneuver the bike around. But with a longer back end, you can ride transition. You're able to get the pump you need. Same with trails, like as soon as you start bringing transition into it, you need that. A you need a little bit longer back end um, to be able to generate that kind of um, that kind of pump and momentum, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So I think in general, this bike is meant to do it all, and I think more importantly, it's meant to go fast and it's meant to take some of the like brutal gaps and drops that you probably put it through without looping out or lacking stability. Yeah, um, that's a problem I don't really have, if I'm honest. Like I don't I don't loop out, but like uh, say hypothetically that's speaking, the frame has the right length. I, I jump I jump <laughs> on I jump on other people's bikes and stuff. They've got the tiny back end, and you know you could 540 on flat on those things. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Like it feels crazy, but I I don't feel like I'm in control of it. Whereas like say if I'm doing like a big three where I've got to go faster and it's like a longer drop, like rather than just being like a slow kind of tip trickle off the edge. Like if it's a big double set or something like that, and you've got to like maintain a fast speed to obviously get, uh, go over the set. Um, being able to control the, the speed in which I'm spinning is paramount for me. Obviously, if I ever rotate, you're in the sh But obviously with this, I feel like I'm in way more control uh, than say I would be with a shorter back end. Yeah. No, and I personally really love it that, like you said, that this is truly a signature frame. You haven't just designed it to cater to what the masses want. I think there's probably a lot of people that are interested in riding exactly what you're having, but a lot of times the brands are just trying to get, hey, well, how are we gonna sell the most? But like, this is gonna make a lot of people happy, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, people want to appeal to the market and stuff like that, but I was like, no, nah, it's, it's mine. Like, it's, the, it's the one opportunity you're gonna to get to ride a bike exactly the way you want. Yeah. And more importantly, your bike's different than a lot of bikes out there, so that means there's probably a select a niche amount market. of people yeah, that yeah. really want this bike. Yeah, yeah, there might be a few heads about that want it and stuff like that, but yeah, go grab one if you want it. So you've specifically designed your dropouts to prevent drag during grinds. So does this help with like, we see you doing like huge up rails to hard 360s and stuff. Does this really help out with those types of tricks? Uh, I'd like to think it does because it doesn't bite. Uh, I think um, when when we first did it, we sort of started, we made it a little bit smaller, like over time it kept going. Obviously over time, first thing you get it, the dropouts back and they look massive yeah. compared to what they are now. But it was uh, the same degree of curvature that was on it was the same as the same as the peg that we had at the time. Okay. So obviously it, it meant that the peg was always, would always see a little bit proud um, mm. as to where the dropout was so there was that less chance of it biting there. Yeah. So you're riding the Federal Session Forks 28 millimeter offset kind of middle of the road again I think that makes sense for your all-around style of riding what else what do you like about these forks? Right I'll be completely honest the the idea of offset means cool to me <laughs> like I'm really sorry it doesn't like the thing is I, I just took it um, so I ran the um, I can't remember what they, what were they called? It was, the, it was basically the forks with the investment cast dropouts. The liquid forks, that's it. It was the liquid fork that we had for years. Like since it first came out, I've religiously stuck by this. Uh, they've never failed me at any, any point at all. And I, I didn't realize that they'd stopped making it. Like they didn't say, <laughs> like they didn't say anything. So I was just going to the warehouse and I was like, oh yeah, can I get, 
liquid forks and I, I think they must have been looking at me like I was crazy because they <laughs> hadn't had that fork out for like four years or something and just they'd weaned me onto something different so if I'm completely honest it doesn't feel a tight it doesn't even feel different to the fork I was running before so like yeah it, it works for me so when it comes to forks you're not so much concerned about the offset as you are as the strength and you're telling me that this is a strong reliable fork the federal session fork That's exactly that it's right. a strong fork. The federal <laughs> session fork? Yep. Session. Not the liquid. <laughs> Not the liquid Wait, fork. Should we bring back the liquid fork? The li we could, it could be your signature, the liquid lacy fork. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah. Like, Stu, <laughs> take notes. <laughs> Dan Lacey, last I checked, you were riding 8.75 bars. Now you're on nines. These are your signature bars. What's important to you about a bar, and why did you bump up a little bit in height? Um, I think... I don't know, it's just sort of progressed over time. Like, um, I've, I was running eight fives for a really long time. And um, it's, I remember when I was filming Beyond, um, uh, I was in San Diego and I bent my bars while I was in Nashville on the trip just before then. I flew to San Diego uh, to go do the Mission Valley three. And um, I was like, my bars are bent, what am I gonna do? So Garrett hit me up saying, I've got bars, but they're eight seven fives. Is that gonna be okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a try, obviously. First day out, went riding, um, went and filmed the three. I was like, yep, sweet, 875s, uh, they're fit for me, they're great, nice one. And I kept that for, yeah, three years I stayed at that, and nines, they just always looked a little bit too big, but then that was because I, was, I felt like I was looking at other people's nines. Mm. Whereas like, if I had a set of my own in a nine, it might feel a little bit different, and it hasn't, it hasn't made them feel any more different. I just feel like my bike stack sits a bit better. Mm. I don't have to have headset spaces underneath mm. to like kind of bring that, because that's where the rise was coming from. I was putting stackers underneath my head, underneath my stem. So now <coughs> obviously got rid of that and just made my bars a little bit bigger. Yeah, so that gets the same height while making everything else cleaner. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So while we're talking about the bars, let's talk about its accessories. You got the stem holding the bars and you got the grips. These are both Fiend products. Explain these to us and what you like about them. Uh, I like everything about them. I've been running um, for a really long time. I ran um, I ran a Colt front load stem because it was it was before it was years and years ago before Federal actually did one. But then we had the hate stem out for a while, and it was a CNC machine stem, so it's really strong and like that. That's another thing. It's like it's at the forefront of your bike. Like you need your forks, your frame, and your stem to be strong. Like they're the points of they're the points that are taking the most stress of your bike. Like you think of the, the counter lever that's at the front end of your bike, all that pressure, you need to have faith in your front end. Yeah. Everyone's doing away with flanges. I was always a flange grip guy. That's why I had Edwins for years. Mm. And then um, they took the flange off of that. So I was like, that was, my, that was my thing. I love the flange grip and everyone's like, you know, I get it. it I still prefer it. Like yeah. I look down at my bike and I thought I, I, I like a flange, but yeah, no, ever, everyone hates it. I don't know why. <laughs> like, what is it? Like, I feel like it was such a good base point for your hand to sit. Mm. Like you knew when your hands were sitting. Now you see people f holding the grips out the end of their bars and stuff like that. Like, it looks crazy. Like you look, you look stupid. Like, what is that? Shit? You hold your bars in here. That's that's why you have it here. Like otherwise, you just have a grip that started out the end here and you ride around like that. <laughs> But you don't, you run it in here, like, and I just felt so much nicer. But this was the next best thing. It's got like a little ridge on the inside of it. The, whatever rubber compound they use is perfect. Um, I said to Garrett, I was like, uh, grips, stem. I was like, it'll always be this. Until I, until I find another alternative, like this is, I, I, I'm not looking. That's the thing, like, I, I like the way it is. Like, I'll stick to my guns forever until the product stops being made. Like, as you know, like, I've, you know, I'll, I'll, run, I'll run it till it dies, like it's, but yeah, like I'm, I'm set in my ways and I like the way this feels, it looks. And I've got a lot of trust in this because it stems, it's, it's like a fit, it's built like a fist. Like I've got, I look down it, I know there's, it's not drilled out, it's not hollowed out, it's made out, it's CNC machine, so I trust it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much, yeah, that's the. I like that, the Fiend stem, CNC machine, built like a fist, the grips. Soft, yeah. yeah, and the next best thing to yeah. a flange. Yeah, next best thing. I've seen you 360, some of the largest gaps ever done. You have the Federal Vice cranks on your bike. I assume they're sturdy, durable. 
You can trust them like everything else. Yeah, it's just, yeah it, it goes back to the same thing with your front end, the stem and everything. Your cranks is the same gig. Um, like I've always been really finicky for, you know, not trying out. It was, oh, try this, it's a little bit lighter. No, I like these. Yeah. Uh, when we first bought these out as a sample, um, I was a little bit hesitant because, I mean, for years I rode power bikes, like yeah. power bike cranks, oh, wow. and then um, I switched, I made the switch to hollow bikes and I kept snapping them. Mm. Because obviously, it, you knew with the power bike, it was a solid arm, and then the hollow bike was hollow, it clues in the name. Um, and I just kept breaking them. So it was like a period of time where it took me a little while to find a set of cranks so I could trust again. Mm -hmm. That I felt like I was like, right, I won't have to think in the back of my mind, oh, I've done, I've done a three with these cranks already this week. Should I be concerned? Should I check them or whatever? These are just throw them on, do what I like. And then, you know, six months down the line, I'll be like, oh, maybe I should check those. Yeah. Nah, absolutely fine. Just change your pedals, you're good. Yeah. No, I think that's the most important thing that you've mentioned is like, your bike is built to be sturdy and trusted, so yeah. you don't have to be worried. Well, yeah, if I go on a two week long trip to, you know, wherever, I don't have instant access to get new products or if, if I break anything and stuff like that. So I know my bike's literally, like, I'm good for however long. Yeah, like, and I think that's important for kids to know too, because a lot of people buying parts out there, they might not have access to the budget to keep buying yeah. new parts. So they want this stuff to last a long time. Yeah, I know, especially nowadays, people want stuff built to last. They haven't yeah. got money just to throw around on stuff that's just gonna break, whatever. Yeah. I mean, when you think of grips, you want a soft rubber compound because you want it like, and you wear it in. And if that wears out in a month, you're like eight bucks, mm -hmm. 10 bucks, whatever. I'll get, I'll get a new set of those because they were perfect. But you don't get to have that same kind of, with a set of cranks or a stem. Like, it's, oh, oh. Oh, that stem was good, but it broke. It's like I'm I'll, I'll never buying that stem again. Period. Like you wouldn't. Like right. of course you wouldn't. Like you want you want to trust the products you're using, and I trust all of them. All right, Dan, you've got that Animal M5 sprocket on your bike. Tell us about it. Well, I'll swing it around so you can have a little look at it because it is <laughs> a delight to look at. It's just, I think it was beautifully. It was like. If you, if you look at it, it's just clean, simple, it's built well. Like, I, I don't do sprocket grinds, I, I don't do crank arm grinds. You can see my cranks are absolutely pristine. They're brand new, because I'm not a crank arm guy. Did one once, landed on my tailbone. <laughs> that, leave it to everyone else. There's never enough room on my bike to put more animal stuff on, because I love it. But it's, it's one of the things I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll switch that out. Sprocket's amazing. Yeah, it's just very clean. Yeah. No, it has a really good look. Yeah, it's beautiful, but yeah. yeah. Array it. What about the Federal, the Federal Command pedals? They do skinny one and the real one. So this is the real, this is what I call the real pedal. And then yeah. they've got the other one. I don't know what it's called because I never run it, but right. I call that the skinny one. So again, you choose the beefier, choose stronger Choose the beefier, choice. stronger choice. Always, right. yeah, it's, instead of shaving weight off and slim line and everything, just get the big fat one on there. Another classic animal product here, the Cush seat. This thing's been around for a while now. It's got kind of a, mid-sized uh, shape and size to it. How important is the shape and size of your seat? And how about the seat post height? Um, I run my seat post slammed, have done since forever, and it will never change that way at all. Um, it, is, it is another one of those things where people always ask me, well, what do you do with bar spins? Uh, like, where do you pinch? I, and I, I technically, I pinch, but I pinch, I pinch for cool. Like I don't pinch anything. Like I'd get, I have to like level out uh, in the bunny hop and once mm. I'm level, then I can throw it. Uh, so I'm not off, off balance or mm. anything. Uh, but I've always had like a mid to fat seat. Like I had a fat seat for years. I was like, no, actually like even before then, so slim seats were the big thing way back in the day. Um, so I had a slim seat for the longest time and then I had a mid seat and then I had a fat seat and I went back to a mid seat again and stayed with a mid. So I had, um, I'm pretty sure I had uh, the lo animal love seat before okay. this and then they remade the Kush and I was like, Ralph, please, please, <laughs> can I, I have to have one. I have to have one. And as you can see, it absolutely matches color, <laughs> color coordinated and color coded across my whole bike and my outfit, might I say. It's quite um, lovely, isn't it? But yeah, it's, it, it's it, like I said, it's got that, you know, original look. You know, mm -hmm. you see it from a mile away, you know that's a Kush seat yeah. straight away. It's, like, it's just synonymous with street riding and animal bikes is the Kush seat. You see it from an absolute distance and you know. All right, Dan, you've got the Federal Stance XL wheels. These come ready to roll just out of the box, just like this, right? Uh, yeah, I think, what was I running? I was running a sample of something for it. No, no, yeah, I was running a sample a while ago of the uh, the new rear shell and the the new driver that they had in there because uh, they switched it from three to four pulls in, okay. in the driver. So it's um, a lot smoother, the mechanism's a lot smoother, your wheel runs a lot quicker and for longer. Um, 
and it sounded a little bit better as well. I know that's a stupid, stupid aesthetic. No. It's having a fucking loud, for it is a loud cassette. Like this is just right. It's just, <coughs> it's just right. But like you said, they come flat out the box, Stance XL rims, uh, 36 spoke, obviously. Um, yeah, tried and tested. These rims don't fail me. Another classic animal product on this bike, the GLH tire 2.3. What do you like about these tires and what tire pressure do you ride as an all around terrain BMXer? 6570. Always. 6570 PSI. Always, always 6570. Okay. Um, the amount of bikes I jumped on, I'm just like, lad, you got a punny. And they're like, no, no, that's just how I run my wheels. <laughs> it's, it's chaos. But, but I've always. It's that's always, a flat tire. That's a flat tire, by the way. A punny <laughs> is a puncture. It's, uh, it's scales for puncture. Um, but yeah, it was the same where obviously, like I said, another classic animal bikes product. Like it's just, you can see it from a mile away. You know, even you can spot the red tab, like the red tab on the side, you're like GLH yeah. straight away, you know it. And these go forever. When I say they go forever, you know, obviously yeah. this, this tire is, it's almost indestructible. So funny story, I'll actually enlighten you with this one. Uh, Chris Mills, uh, some people might remember him as Millsy, uh, used to ride for Dub and Federal Bikes back in the day. He, um, for a mental health charity, he actually rode from John O'Groats in Scotland um, all the way to Hastings on a BMX, GLH tires, not one puncture the whole way, <laughs> the whole way down. Literally rode wow. like in the rain, in whatever conditions he was in, he absolutely smashed it and he had GLH tires on his bike and he didn't get a single, not a single ounce of pressure left that left his tires, no punctures, no nothing. Yeah, it's the original street tire. Yeah. Animal bikes, like, you yeah. say no more. All right, the Federal plastic pegs with a chromo core. Three questions. One, why is the chromo core so important? Why do you ride 4.5 size? And why do you only run three pegs instead of four? Right. Um, so I'll start with the, the chrome molly insert. So basically, um, I found, especially when um, obviously the age of lightweight products began to take its toll on streets and stuff like that, um, people were making alloy pegs, like alloy inserts for your pegs. Did you ever run an alloy, peg, alloy insert? No. no, of course you didn't, because you know, like you dent them. That was the problem straight away. As much as you saved maybe 20 grams of weight per peg, you were losing the structural integrity of something that you are literally smashing onto ledges and rails the whole day. So what's the <laughs> point? What are, you, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. Where, so this, the chromoly inserts, they weigh more, but it's the same thing with most of my bike. It works and it doesn't break. Like, but if you have an alloy insert, they are prone to denting. Mm. And then guess what? You can't get, you're out, you get a puncture, you can't get your socket mm. in your peg to get your wheel off. Great. <laughs> then what are you thinking? Should have listened to Lacey and got a chromo peg. <laughs> I'll wait for the I'll wait for the messages. Don't worry about it. Four point five. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what were they before? I think it was a four. Four inch was standard, weren't it? Four inch was the standard peg size for the longest time. And then people started. I think I can't remember who it was that made the first like long. Or everyone was like, "Fucking hell! Look at the size of that thing. It was massive." And obviously over time, it just seems to be one of those things where you got bit of a longer peg, got a bit more to aim for. Yeah. What is it, 0.5 inch? Like, what is that? It's not a lot, yeah. really, when you think about it, it's nothing, but. Um, but it gives you that little bit of extra on crooked grinds, probably especially. I do not do crooked grinds. I, crooked I, ca grinds? I cannot figure them out. Don't <laughs> laugh at me. Actually, no, I figured them out once years ago and was like, oh, great. Came back to the skate park the next day, just couldn't do it, wrote it off. It's another one of those tricks, along with crank arm grinds, just mm. not for me. The real one is why three pegs? Because yeah. I don't use the fourth. <laughs> it's a waste of time. It's a, right. it's, a way, it's a waste of weight for me. Like, not that I'm bothered about it, but it gets in the way. I feel yeah. like I sit with my fit, I sit with my foot like on the, like on the ball of my foot, like midsole um, on my pedal. And I'll notice like people will say to me, oh, you just need to adjust your foot in mm. forward a little bit so you don't clip your peg. Why the f am I gonna adjust <laughs> the way my feet are on the pedals to accommodate a peg that I don't want? Like that is, <laughs> that's what I don't understand. Like fair enough, if you're into it, no worries, you can run your fourth peg. Yeah. But even with my back end, as long as it is, I still clip my foot mm. on my peg. So all these cats are running around with 12 and a half inch back ends. Yeah. What the, uh, why isn't their shoe being pulled off? <laughs> like as they're pedaling along, I don't understand. Like it's, 
it's been one of those things for years where I was like, right, okay. And I did, I ran it. I learned Predator Grinds on a flat rail. I loved it for five minutes and then I broke my chain. Mm. So I, I was like, no, 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 this isn't me, can't be asked. And then it's just stayed that way. So I think the theme here is that everything on Dan Lacey's bike is strong, sturdy, and dependable. Dan, thanks for talking to us today at Source BMX, breaking down your bike for the people. If you wanna know exactly what Dan rides, exactly how much it costs, and check the availability, go to the bike builder on sourcebmx.com.